Good afternoon, uh, Chipiteros, and uh, welcome to another edition of Pillow Talks. Um, I'll start off again by analyzing the markets. So here we have the uh, chart of the PSEI index, and uh, we've, we've gotten some, a little bit of ray of hope in the last two days with the market climbing from 5,830 all the way up to 6,000. So, if you look at the chart right now, we are still very much in a sideways trend and uh, you can't really conclude at this, at this point that the market is going to trend up from here, no? But at the very least, uh, we at least held above the 5,830 level. It's a good thing that we didn't retest the 5,700 levels anymore. Uh, that would probably mean that there's a lot of people who were trying to look for the market to drop to 5,700 5, to buy, but were not able to do so. So that's a good sign. No? But uh, in order to be really in the clear and for this market to really start trending up, we need to take out this previous highs at 6,034 and 6,167. Okay, so um, last Friday, there was um, news that uh, President Trump got uh, the virus and initially the U.S. futures markets went limit down. No? But uh, by the end of the night, last Friday, um, the Dow just ended down by, you know, 130 points. So it, I don't think it, it, uh, uh, it, it's an, a serious issue at the moment right now, you know, unless Siguro, um, he becomes quite uh, serious in his condition. So again, we are still tra range trading um, and we are currently, if you look at the Bollinger Bands of the markets, it's really, really tight right now. Um, the, the volatility of the market is really, really small. And I do believe that we are about to break out from this range. You know? um, hopefully, this fourth quarter, we can finally see uh, the, the, the cases drop by you know, 1,000 or less uh, per day. You know? I think that would be the main catalyst for this market to go higher. Okay, so watch those uh, new cases every day. Uh, we're still um, doing, what, 2,500 cases a day. So if we drop below 2,000, we go to 1,000 cases a day. I believe by that time, we'll be seeing the market traded about 6.3 or 6.4. Okay, so I'm, I'm bullish, uh, but... Uh, again, we need to clear the 6,034 and 6,167 levels first, all right? Okay, so before I continue with my video for uh, today, um, I'd like to thank one of my sponsors, uh, APS Online. Um, if you want to trade with a broker that has excellent research, uh, do trade with APS Online. Okay, so um, um, before I, uh, the next topic that I want to um, present to you this afternoon, uh, I want to give you an idea of, you know, how a trend actually, um, or, or rather, um, an anatomy of a trend, you know, what are the phases of the trend? It's something that... Uh, because, you know, there's a lot of stocks that right now that are virtually doing nothing and just moving in a long sideways trend. So what does that mean? And then we have stocks that like, you know, like Dito and Chelsea that are, you know, like going to the roof and are doing parabolic rises. So what does that mean? Uh, where, where in, 
where are they in the in the in the in the trend where are what phase of the market are they in right now so you know understanding these uh, concepts would help you make money in this market okay so um, I featured now corporation in 2017 as uh, as how as our basis on trying to understand phases of the trend okay so before a big uptrend occurs there normally is a period of very um, long sideways um, dormant consolidation okay so just like what happened in now in 2017 there were months and months of, um, of a time when now was just doing nothing but you know just going up and down within the range okay this is what you call the the phase one and it's a a, more, a long dormant sideways consolidation phase of the trend okay so normally the volume here is very low no one is no uh, minding the stock uh, it's very uneventful uh, there's nothing really happening in the company you know so it's in a sideways trend okay that's that's phase one and it's it that's normally a good time to invest in the stock it's just that you might become impatient because you will probably um, um, wait for a while before the stock starts to really move you know so although you know that it's probably trading at the lows uh, a lot of people will probably have will not probably have the patience to wait for um, the prices to trend you know and they might probably get bored and just um, maybe um, transfer it to another stock that's moving you know that's a typical behavior of people in the market okay so that's phase one phase two is the accumulation phase wherein you'll notice no um, after the period of low volume here there's a uh, volume suddenly starts spiking up and the prices slowly starts to create higher highs and higher lows okay um, this is actually the period of um, accumulation and it's probably the 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 face of the trend wherein maybe some insiders are um, front running the stock and are probably buying it before everybody else knows something about the company okay so you'll see at this point there will probably be a, a period wherein it's gonna go up quite significantly and with volume and then it will die down and but create a higher low and then climb back up again okay so at this stage insiders quietly accumulate the stock um, it's not yet really in an uh, in a very strong uptrend but rather in a sideways to upward trend okay then you have the period wherein the stock makes a very big move and this is the phase three of the of the trend no um at this point um the momentum traders starts getting in into the stock um there probably is already some news on what's happening in the stock that's why it's starting to go vertical um, um volume really spikes up at this point um volatility goes up um and you know of course prices accelerate upwards okay and then the fourth stage is the uh the parabolic rise this is when everybody probably thinks that there's just nowhere to go but upwards okay so this is when you'll see prices go to the ceiling it goes up you know by 30 40 50 uh, 50 percent in one day and goes up and does that by you know a couple of days in a row um, um, this is this is probably when uh, your friends who doesn't know anything about the stock market suddenly asks about that the uh, this particular stock and wants to buy it you know um, so it's a period wherein everybody is just looking at one direction and it's upwards okay and of course at this point the valuation of the stock becomes 
quite expensive and um, uh, you know and and the uh, volatility is just going up the roof okay so this is this is probably the scariest part of the trend for me this because this is where this is the time where in you'll see the stock for medium or even long-term peaks. And then, you, uh, phase 5 is you have the distribution phase. So, after the uh, parabolic rise, you'll normally see um, uh, um, a move going down with the same uh, velocity as, it, as when it went up. Okay, so the there's a saying, you know, the 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 faster that the stock goes up, the the faster it goes down as well, and it it, it applies to this distribution phase, no? So the first time that the stock starts seeing some signs of weakness, everybody everybody panics, and everybody starts selling, you know, and um, there are there will probably be people who will see the drop as an opportunity to get in uh, while the stock is low so the stock will climb back up and retest the highs but you know um, astute traders and maybe some insiders will probably see it as an opportunity to sell when the stock rallies um, again they know that the valuations at these levels are very high already so uh, they'll probably sell into the rallies um, so at this point, you'll see the stock go up and down um, with a very, very um, big range, okay? So it goes up and down, but with a very big range. Sometimes probably the insiders who are trying to sell the stock will probably even try to push it upward so that they can sell higher and with bigger volumes when it starts to go up, okay? So... Uh, you'll notice, again, you'll notice it by seeing the big volatility of the ranges and the stock going up and down erratically. And of course, normally at this point, the, the valuations are very expensive. And then finally, for the phase 5, you have the panic stage. This is when the critical support of the stock starts to um, break down. And the stock breaks from a, um, a, a, topish, a topish pattern, like for example, a head and shoulders or a double tap, a triple tap, whatever. Um, and, you know, um, it has all the characteristics of when the stock did a parabolic rise, uh, except that it's in, in, in reverse, you know. Um, so... Um, it, you can probably no longer be able to sell the stock high at this point. Everybody is just trying to get out. Um, um, there's just no way to sell your stock at this point unless you sell it down. Okay, so this is the most destructive uh, part of the trend, and at this point, you have the realization that you know you you have been fooled in the market. Okay, so, um, so a lot of stocks actually right now are in either the phase one stage or in the phase two stage right now, if you ask me, okay? Um, stocks like, like Dito or Chelsea would probably either be in the big move stage or in the parabolic rise stage, okay? So, uh, if you were to ask me, and um, if you were to get my opinion on whether to buy stocks that are doing parabolic rises, or whether to buy stocks that are uh, in either the accumulation or long dormant consolidation stage, I would definitely choose to buy stocks either in phase one or phase two rather than in in the phase three or phase uh, four uh, moves. No? But ideally, if you're a short-term trader, I think the best time to accumulate the stock is in the phase two, wherein prices are already starting to create higher highs and higher lows. 
and volume is starting to pick up already um, but there at this point you know that there's still a big um, potential for, of the stock to go higher no so yeah I, ideally you want to probably try and look for stocks that are in this uh, phase right now and there's a number of them in the market okay okay so um, um, before I go to my uh, next topic which is uh, I would like to uh, discuss with you this upcoming IPO Converge ICT Solutions Incorporated I'd like to first uh, thank um, my next sponsor, AAA Equities. Um, if you want to trade, if you want to trade with a broker with automated stops and automated uh, breakout orders, do trade with AAA Equities. Okay, so a lot of hype has been going around with this uh, upcoming IPO uh, called uh, Converge ICT Solutions Incorporated, and you know, rightly so. Um, they are primarily a broadband solutions provider and they're the, the third biggest broadband solutions uh, provider in the country in just you know next to PLDT and Globe. So it's bound to be a, a very hyped up issue right now, especially in this pandemic. So let's look at the terms of the issue. Um, the, the stock will be having seven... 0.5 billion shares and at an indicative uh, IPO price of 24 pesos per share will have a market capitalization of 180 billion uh, pesos okay so the, the pricing isn't final yet they will fi uh, finalize the price on Friday October 9 okay uh, at, uh, 24 pesos will be at a maximum price uh, but let's see if they can pull it off at 24. Uh, they will be offering 1.5 billion shares out of the total 7.5 billion shares. And out of the 1.5 billion shares, only 480 million are primary offered shares. And the rest are secondary offered shares. So what, what's the difference between the primary and the secondary? Well, the primary are new shares. The secondary are shares of the previous owner. Okay, so um, in this IPO, unlike other IPOs that we've encountered uh, uh, in the past, this one has a bigger, a much bigger secondary offered shares than the primary shares. Okay, so out, it's like around two thirds of the offer is that yung mga may-ari mismo yung nagbebenta okay so only a third of the shares that will be offered in the IPO are new shares okay approximately 83% of the secondary shares to be sold are owned by Warburg Pincus Private Equity okay in 2019 Warburg invested 225 million dollars in Converge so Warburg will be selling around 828 million shares out of their total of uh, more than 2 billion shares, okay? So um, some people are saying that um, this is sort of like bridge financing, you know, like they, um, the company um, needed, needed the money last year, so they borrowed money from Warburg uh, Pincus private equity and then they will be um, um, paying back this, uh, this money via the proceeds of the IPO but uh, I, I don't know no? um, why would they just need the money last year and then what pay it back after one year uh, I, I don't know I, I have my doubts on it and uh, I have a feeling somebody just wants to make money out of the IPO so again for me the secondary shares whether whether it is really bridge financing or whatever for me it's a bit of a turn off in the IPO um, the lead on the lead underwriters for this IPO would be BDO capital and BPI capital 
And because, you know, it's a pretty big issue, there's also some participating underwriters like AUB, First Metro, Maybank, PNB, and RCBC. Okay, so the start of the offering will be next week, October 13, and it will, be, it will end on October 19, and the stock will be listing on October 27. Okay, so 10 billion out of the 11 billion peso proceeds that the company will be uh, raising will be used for CapEx. As of June 2020, um, Globe currently has 2.9 million subscribers in its broadband uh, business while PLDT has 2.6 million subscribers. On the other hand, Converge has 730,000 subscribers. Okay? Um, the potential in the industry is very big, you know, and uh, it, in a study that I read, um, only 33% of the addressable households in the Philippines have broadband connections right now. So, um, if, they, if these three companies are able to, se to serve all these 18.5 million addressable households, then their revenues and their broadband subscribers will, at, will what, triple, okay? So the, poten the, in the potential in the industry is very big. The industry is currently, especially in this pandemic, the industry is, is in a hyper growth uh, stage right now. So the company is also in a hyper growth stage. Um, uh, the compounded annual growth rate of the company in the next five years, according to APS Online, is 32% all the way up to 2024. So from a subscribe, subscriber base of uh, just 530 million last year, they will be projected to have more than 2 million subscribers by 2024. Okay, uh, now let's compare the valuations of uh, Globe, PLDT, and Converge. Okay, so in terms of the market cap, uh, PLDT has the biggest market cap at 294 billion pesos, followed by Globe at 282 billion. If Converge is able to sell the shares at 24 pesos per share, then Converge will, be have, will have a market cap on listing day at 100 billion. 80 billion okay uh, um, in the first six months globe made 11.5 billion pesos uh, PLDT made 12.3 billion pesos while converge only made 1.2 billion pesos okay so if I annualize that you know I just double this amount and create a PE ratio then Globe will and PLDT will have a PE ratio of about 12 times, while Converge will have a PE ratio of 72 times, 73 times. So that's how expensive Converge is from a PE ratio perspective right now. In terms of uh, its price to book, if you compare the price of the stock to its uh, book value, um, PLDT would be the cheapest at just 2.6 times its book value, followed by Globe at 3.8 times its book value. On the other hand, Converge will have a book value of double that of Globe and PLDT, which is 6.2 times. Okay, so some analysts are saying, sorry, some analysts are um, justifying the expensive valuation because of the much bigger uh, earnings growth of the company. You know, like in the last two years, Globe had an average earnings growth of just 22%. PLDT had an average earnings growth of 30%. While Con Converge, in the last three years, had an average 
earnings growth of 57%. So, uh, definitely, uh, between the three companies, Converge will have the biggest growth in terms of its subscriber base, in terms of its revenues, and in terms of its income in the next uh, five years. No? But, again, um, does the valuation justify this? Uh, you be the judge. So, the good thing about this IPO, uh, the stock is in a hyper-growth industry and is a hyper-growth stock. Uh, again, the projected compounded annual growth rate between now and 2000, between 2019 and 2024 is 32%. Okay? Now, what's the bad? Well, the bad is that it's expensive. It's quite uh, the the valuation is quite expensive. Um, Two thirds of the offering is second or secondary share, so it's that's a bit of a turnoff. It's a massive issue. Um, uh, a total of one point five billion shares will be offered for sale, and if you multiply that by what twenty. 24 let's see 24 times 1.5 that's you know it will have a free float of about uh, 36 billion uh, in the market okay and of course in the next uh, couple of months couple of quarters uh, there will you know uh, Dito will be emerging and will also offering be broad uh, will also be offering broadband services now, of course, we'll, are, are already offering broadband services and will also be a bit of a threat to the big three. So what's my verdict on the IPO? Well, for me, uh, if you ask me right now, it's just a trading buy for me. And if I wanted to invest in the stock, I'd probably wait for better opportunities for prices to go lower in the next couple of months or in the next couple of quarters before I try and uh, buy and invest in the stock. But of course, um, just like with any IPO, you want to um, feel the reception of the, uh, the market on the IPO before you decide to buy, uh, regardless of the fundamentals of the company, you know, regardless if it's very expensive, you know, if everybody wants to buy the stock, then of course, prices are going to go higher, all right? So, that's it for this edition uh, of, of Pillow Talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you learned something from me. And uh, see you all again next week. Bye. Okay, right.